Welcome to a lesson on matrix multiplication, the properties of matrix multiplication, as well as inverse matrices. Before we define matrix multiplication, let's define the dot product or inner product of two vectors. Usually this is a row vector multiplied by a column vector of the same size. For the dot product, we multiply each pair of entries from the first and second vector, and we sum these products. The result is a single number. For example, below, vector A is expressed as a row matrix, or more specifically, a one by three matrix. And vector B is expressed as a column matrix, or more specifically, a three by one matrix. The dot product or inner product is equal to A1 times B1 plus A2 times B2 plus A3 times B3. Now that we've defined the dot product or inner product, we can define the product of matrices. Let us first denote the ith row of matrix A as row sub i of A, and the jth column of A as column sub j of A. For an m by n matrix A and an n by p matrix B, we can define the product of A times B. So we cannot find the product of any two matrices. In order for the product to be defined, the number of columns in the first matrix must equal the number of rows in the second matrix. In this case, we're multiplying an M by N matrix by an N by P matrix. The multiplication is defined because we have N equals N, and the outer dimensions give us the dimensions of the product, which in this case should be an M by P matrix. So because the multiplication is defined, we let A times B be an M by P matrix, whose I jth entry is the dot product of row I from matrix A and column J from matrix B. So it is important to recognize how the sizes match up when multiplying two matrices. Again, the number of columns in the first matrix must equal the number of rows in the second matrix in order for the product to be defined, and the outer dimensions give us the dimensions of the product. Let's look at an example. Below we have a two by three matrix times a three by three matrix. We first want to make sure the product is defined. Well, because three equals three, the product is defined, and the outer dimensions of two by three give us the dimensions of the product. And now to find the entry in row one, column one of the product, we need to find the dot product of row one in the first matrix and column one in the second matrix. Sometimes we just say multiply row one in the first matrix by column one of the second matrix, but again, it really is the dot product. I've already written this out below. Determining the dot product, we have one times one, plus two times one, plus three times one. Simplifying, the entry in row one, column one of the product is equal to six. And now let's find the entry in row one, column two, or a sub one, two. To do this, we find the dot product of row one from the first matrix and column two from the second matrix. This gives us one times zero plus two times one plus three times zero, which is equal to two. Working our way across the first row, let's now find the entry in row one, column three. To do this, we find the dot product of row one from the first matrix and column three from the second matrix. This gives us one times negative one plus two times one plus three times zero, which is equal to one. And now moving to row two, to find the entry a sub two comma one in the product, we find the dot product of row two in the first matrix and column one in the second matrix. This gives us four times one plus five times one plus six times one, which is equal to 15. Now let's find a sub two two. To do this, we find the dot product of row two in the first matrix and column two in the second matrix. This gives us four times zero plus five times one plus six times zero which is equal to five. And for the last entry, the entry in row two, column three, we find the dot product of row two in the first matrix and column three in the second matrix. This gives us four times negative one plus five times one plus six times zero, which is equal to positive one. For matrix multiplication, we want something similar to a one in real numbers or an analog of a one. This analog is the so-called identity matrix. The identity matrix is a square matrix with ones on the diagonal or main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. It is usually denoted with a capital I. For each size, we have a different identity matrix, so sometimes we may include the size as a subscript. 
For example, I sub 3 would be the 3 by 3 identity matrix here in the center. I've also included the 1 by 1 identity matrix as well as the 2 by 2 identity matrix. We have the following rules for matrix multiplication. Suppose A, B, and C are matrices of the correct sizes so that the multiplication is defined and alpha is some scalar or number. A times the product of B and C is equal to the product of A and B times C. A times the sum of B and C is equal to A times B plus A times C. Similarly, the sum of B and C times A is equal to B times A plus C times A. And then the scalar or number alpha times the product of A and B is equal to the product of alpha and A times B, as well as A times the product of alpha and B. And then finally, I, the identity matrix times A, is equal to A, which is equal to A times I. And again, these properties should remind us of similar properties for real numbers. And now let's talk about a few warnings. First, A times B doesn't equal B times A in general. It may sometimes, but it's not a property. That is, matrices do not commute where the commutative property does not hold. For example, let's consider matrix A and matrix B. Let's check to see if A times B equals B times A. And we'll do this using the Desmos matrix calculator. So I've already set this up. I have matrix A and matrix B entered. Let's check A times B, and then B times A, and notice how the two products are not equal. Next, A times B equals A times C does not necessarily imply that B equals C, even if A is not the zero matrix. And then three, A times B equals zero does not necessarily mean that A is equal to zero or B is equal to zero. For example, if we let both matrix A and B be this two by two matrix here, let's check A times B. I've already set this up, but I have the matrix in C. Let's check C times C. Notice how C times C is the zero matrix, but matrix C is not the zero matrix. Let's suppose that A and B are n by n matrices, meaning square matrices, such that A times B is equal to the n by n identity matrix, which is also equal to B times A. Then we call B the inverse of A, and we denote B as A inverse. If the inverse of A exists, then we call A invertible. If A is not invertible, meaning the inverse does not exist, we sometimes say A is singular. And then finally, if A is invertible, meaning it has an inverse, then A times B equals A times C does imply that B equals C. In particular, the inverse of A is unique. We just multiply both sides by A inverse. This gives us A inverse times A times B equals A inverse times A times C. And we know A inverse times A is equal to I, giving us I times B equals I times C. Simplifying, we do have B equals C. It's also true that the inverse of A inverse is equal to matrix A. I hope you found this helpful.